the nature of the end of semester. So we're going to continue working on discretizing ordinary differential equations for initial value type of problems. So the whole idea that we uh, talked about last time is that we are solving a differential equation of the type dy dx is f of x y. Okay. So that I'm looking for y of x dy dx is the slope of y of x. And one idea to solve this problem is from whatever your starting point is, you have to have to give yourself uh, an initial value to start from. You're going to take that slope, which we're referring to as phi, and extrapolate your solution in a linear way. Linear is always the simplest thing we know how to work with. Okay? So we're going to approximate my non-linear function that you don't know, I don't know what it is, why I'm looking for it, okay? And I'm just extrapolating and get this next value at some space h away as basically this old value plus slope times h. That's literally from this triangle right here. And this is my predicted value. My true value is something else and there is an error that I'm making in this linear approximation. And what happened if I, to the error, if I basically uh, halve my step h, so my h is twice smaller? What happens to the error between the predicted value, which would be here somewhere, and the, tr the true value? It gets smaller as well, right? So the, with the smaller step, with the finer step, I'm going to get a better solution. That's, in general, the idea of numerical methods, right? If I have the capability of taking the smaller step, in your computational project, we said, oh, take 10 wax layers and 10 steel layers, right? Well, if you have, say, 100 and 100, you have a smaller step, so you should get a finer solution, right? And possible hopefully more accurate. And if it actually is more accurate, then we actually know that all is well with our numerical method. Yeah. Now, basically, that's the simplest thing that I can do. So whatever I'm doing is like I start from an initial point and I kind of extrapolate this d by dx, which I know what it is. That's actually given by the problem. My d by dx is f of whatever point that I'm extrapolating from. And I take that as a so we actually had a very simple code that does that for, I'm not going to go over all of the details, that does that for the Euler's method. Basically, I say, okay, my next y, yi plus 1, is my previous y, and this is my slope estimate, f of xi, yi times h. And we had an actual differential equation given as dy dx is my it's this cubic polynomial okay so it's actually a simple function of x not just x y uh, so it's simpler to integrate i can actually integrate and solve this analytically so we all have an analytical solution offered as well okay? and we start from x zero is zero and y zero is one in your differential class you would say that y of 0 is 1 is your initial point. Okay? And we are stepping from there. I asked you to compute step x1, y1 by hand and also find the relative error, which we can gauge because we actually have a true value here. Okay? So I can basically test against it. Great. So I said, okay, program Euler method for this case for all of these values of xi on interval 0, 4. And h, x0, y0, xn are my inputs. And then I should actually output vectors x, y of, value, uh, of values on the interval as output of this function. So what did I do last time? And I posted this code that I did for you. Uh, there is it. 
Okay, it's right here. This is what I just posted. So these are my inputs. I didn't create the function just yet out of it. But basically, this is my step. Yi plus 1 is y of i plus slope times h. It's a very simple for loop. And I go to n minus 1 because I have i plus 1 here. So I got, got to be careful not to overdo it. So let me import matplotlib as plt and then plt plot x y. So uh, pyplot. Okay, this is the very crude plot of the solution right there, just to test that I, I did it correctly. Now, how do I compare that to my analytical solution? Well, I need to program myself. I nearly left it as anil. I caught myself there. <laughs> My analytic solution in this case of x, well, in every case of x, is right here. plus 4 times minus 10 and plus 1. So x to the 4, 4x cubed, minus 10x squared, plus 8 times 5. This should be OK. Is this function going to work? I'm just going to call it a of x. How's that? And give, give myself a Is this function going to work if I give it the vector of values? No. What's going to be wrong? If, if this is, if x is a vector, is this y a vector? Yes. Yeah, so it's actually going to work. So I can actually do plt plot x a of x. Yeah? So I'm a little, little off. <laughs> and this is my, I'm going to label this as Euler h is 0.5 and this is gonna be label analytic and um, I need plt legend right there we go so I'm a little off now, how am I going to improve? Decrease H. Let's decrease H. 0.1. Uh-huh. I'm better. I'm smoother. 
Now I want to play with this. I want to play with this, so it's a very good idea to make this a function. So I'm just going to define Euler method of all of these inputs that I have up here. So h, x0, y0, xn. I'm going to indent all of this. And I'm not going to plot this part of the function. And I'm going to return x and y. And now what I need before plotting here is x, y is Euler method of, well, I guess these values. h, x, 0, y, 0, y, n. Does it still work? Something doesn't work. y, n is not defined. Oh, well, because it's not. Okay, it still works. And I'm going to also remove printing of y. So basically, I took a working code and I converted it to a function. That function depends on h, x0, y0, xn. Now what I could do, I could run this for, so I'm going to actually change h. So first time around, I'm going to put it as 0.5. Okay. Then I'm going to repeat the same thing and add to the plot. I'm going to call this x1, y1, and I'm going to run it for something finer, right? And then I'm going to plot that x, y1, y1. And I can now keep doing this, and I'm going to just relabel my plot. And I'm going to keep doing this for one more. What does my problem say? 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and 0 0.05. I'm going to call that x2. This is why we create functions, so I can easily play with it and compare and it's a clean execution of the code. And my x, 0, y, 0, x, and that stays the same. So I can now see how with decreasing step, 0 0.5, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, I get closer to analytic. This analytic solution looks choppy because I chose to plot it that way. I should actually plot it for this x2, y, x2 because it has the mo more points. Right? It, it's up to me where I execute this. There we go. Now it's smoother. See what I did there? I just plotted for more points. Analytic solution is just analytic solution. I can plot it for anything. I just took my last x2 because I call it I need x's and y's. Whenever I'm plotting, I needed x's and y's. However many x's I give it, that many y's I need. If I use a crude discretization of x, I'm going to get analytic solution that is crude too because I'm just evaluating it at, at a finite number of points. And when you get very nice 0 0.05, is pretty s small discretization. Let's do grammar correctly as well need a space after it. This is pretty fine resolution, right? So I'm not going to even notice that it's discrete in nature. All plots are discrete in nature. They're not continuous. Only math on paper is continuous. Everybody got this?
If you want different markers, different colors of this plot, you can knock yourself out and change it. But ultimately what you're solving, even when it's very fine, okay, we can say, put this in red and give it stars and then you can actually see you can see how many points you computed for they're still discrete points they're close together but they're discrete points okay. and your numer numerical solution is always discrete even when it looks small smooth questions about this this is it. Now, this method is not the best of them all. I kind of get to the solution, but I would really, at 0 0.05, I would like to basically be on top of this analytic solution. That'd be nice. Okay. So Euler method is very simple, but it's the cheapest method. Cheapest is never the best. So now what we're going to do for the rest, but it might be good enough. That depends on your problem, right? So we're going to now improve my method. First step, and it's all about estimating this slope a little better. If I think about error, okay, this is where my error is in Euler method. This is my Euler method. It's all about Taylor series, people. Taylor series, right? I chopped off these rest of the terms. I could get better accuracy with more terms. Now, for that, I also need to estimate f prime, which I don't necessarily have. Okay? So I can't just simply take three terms because I don't have f prime, right? But there is a way to play with it. So one method says, okay. So this is something similar to what we got, just different choice of colors. <laughs> for it. So Hoyne's method, and I say Hoyne because I'm going for German pronunciation of it. I have no idea what people say in English. <laughs> Humes? I don't know. Uh, so essentially, this slope, in first, in Euler's method, I took the slope at this point. You can see how I took the slope at this point and extrapolated it. I went too far. Well, this method says, okay, how about you take a slope at this point and slope at this point that you're going to with the estimate. So take, take your Euler method that gives you another point xi plus 1 and this sort of y, predicted y for it, and take a slope there and average the two. Okay? So I take this slope, and this slope is a, this slope is a little milder here, this function f of xi plus 1 and this y that is predicted here by Euler method. I'm just going to take that slope and average the two and see whether that performs better. Okay. It's that simple. So I take this y that I would normally take as a solution at this point. I could take it as a prediction. Okay. So let's see whether that's better. So I'm going to copy this method that I created as Euler. I'm going to go into a new cell, just to, and I'm going to say coin. Mechanics of the method is already there. So here it says, well, don't take this as y i plus 1 just yet. Take this as predicted, y predicted. I'm just going to say YP for sh being short. So this is my sort of value predicted by Euler's methods. 
And then my ultimate slope will be the average of this slope that was the slope for Euler method. Whoa. And my cut, copy, paste is today not working. Control. Oh, that's so when a range of computers passes through my office hours, I switch in between Macs and Windows, and then I switch how I do cut, copy, paste. Um, so then I may. What did I do here? Okay, I copied something else. And then I don't do basic cut, copy, paste on my computer. Suddenly, I don't do correctly. OK. So plus, so if at this x of i plus 1, comma, this yp, the predicted value. So this is average of first slope plus second slope. Does everybody see that? This is my first slope. dy dx is f of x, y. Okay? Therefore, my slope is given by f of x, y at whatever point I'm sitting in. I need both x and y for it. So my slope here is f of x, y, and my slope here is f of x, i plus 1, and this predicted y, p. Okay? And I average the two slopes. And that's the ultimate slope that I'm going to take, y, i plus 1, woo, is y of i plus, I'm just going to say slope times h. That's it. That's what Hoyne's method says. Ah, if you type it in correctly, what did I mess up now? Let's see. Ah, I did not close the brackets. Here we go. Syntax is correct. Let's see whether we actually get something out of this. So now I'm going to, so how do I compare two different methods? When I had only one method, I was comparing for different H's whether I'm improving. Now I'm going to pick one of these H's okay, and compare Euler method for that H and point method for that H, okay? And analytical solution since we have it. So I'm gonna again do cut, copy, paste here. Which H do we wanna do? How we do we how we do for 0.5? That was pretty bad for Euler. And again, I still don't know how to do cut, copy, paste after working with Windows for a moment. Command C, not control. All right. So there's Euler, and I'm just going to repeat this and do point. And this is not, I'm going to call it now x3, y3. And I'm going to copy myself that analytic solution.
better? It's verb. Do I know why? They didn't do analysis. <laughs> okay. But analysis here, and that's what you do have to do for numerical methods. This course is just too introductory for that. To go back to Taylor series and analyze why is this slope? You can express all of these values and slopes in terms of uh, values, new values in terms of the uh, in terms of the Taylor series, and do analysis what your error actually is. So error has basically improved in order of age, and that's why I get closer to analytic. Did everybody get this for Horn? Again, I just estimated slope differently. All of these formulas have a form, my new or my next value of y takes the previous value of y plus some slope times h, which is motivated by Taylor's series formula. I'm making an error here. There's a truncated part of the Taylor series here that I'm ignoring. But this gives me estimate, and with smaller h, it improves. Gonna now give you, or you're gonna actually go and um, program that. So I could actually improve this method. So here I took one predicted value and combined the slopes. I could actually iterate this part a number of times. We're not going to do that in Horn's method. So you could actually run a little loop a certain number of times to improve in even better. And that's what's actually kind of formulated here. We're not going to do that. That's called iterating on corrector equation. So you could just kind of do this a couple of times. What I'm going to do is actually introduce one of the best methods around kind of really gets a so-called fourth order accurate. And what it does is basically it estimates a number or general form of these methods. They estimate, so I have general form, this is my slope. Okay, This slope is basically a weighted combination of a number of slopes. And my first slope will be the slope from Euler's method, the simplest one ever. And some of them will, they will take some sort of like midpoints and estimate slope at those midpoints. And I can do that a number of times. And then I'm just going to take different weights and weight these forms, uh, slopes, and give myself a better prediction. It's a little more work. So, but for better accuracy, you often have to gauge, do you need more accuracy in the problem you're solving? Because it does come at a little bit of an expense. Now, these are not, nobody's just throwing darts. There is a branch of numerical analysis that will go and analyze, and you, again, everything in these things, analysis goes through Taylor series and comparing two solutions, and you can kind of, combine these weights in order to cancel terms or as many terms as possible in Taylor series. And that's how you get what these weights should be, is A1, A2, A3, A4. So I just want you to know that conceptually. It's not that somebody is just like throwing suggestions, let's use one third of this and two thirds of the other. You can try to guess and see whether it works. But the way these weights are adjusted is to basically cancel as many terms in Taylor series as possible, and that gives you good accuracy. Okay? Now, I'm just going to explain how this works conceptually. So this is basically in so what's called classical fourth order Runge Kata method. There are two people who worked on it. Takes these weights. It estimates four possible slopes, okay? 
and takes a weighted average of those four slopes. So my weight, one over six, the second one is two over six, the third one is two over six, and the fourth one is one over six. They sum up to one, that's why it's weighted average. And then times h. So this is my ultimate slope. Now, what does it do? Okay. So this first slope is basically my slope at my starting point x i. Actually, I'm gonna do this here. My first slope. So are you ready? I'm gonna take you on a whirlwind geometrical tour of why this <laughs> method works. Okay. This first slope is x i y i. It's right here, it's this red thing. I'm going to take that slope, what it predicts, at this halfway point, this one, xi plus one half h. So that takes me right here. At this point, my real solution, and it's given by ODE, has a slope, and that slope is plotted here. That's my slope k2. So my slope k2 is f at this half point where I got using slope 1. Okay? So that's my second slope, okay? right here. Now I will take this slope k2. It's a slightly different slope. I'm going to take that halfway as well. And at that point, I'm going to evaluate what my third slope is. And I'm going to take that third slope all the way for entire h, not just half, h over 2. And that's going to give me one more point where I can is estimate one more slope. So that's now four slopes. And when I average them, this new slope will actually, boom, land pretty much geometrically on my actual solution. That's my actual black line. That's what it conceptually should do. So I'm just improving my gauge of this slope, okay, by estimating. And again, I take the first slope, I take that halfway, this is K1 here, I take it halfway and I evaluate slope K2 at that point. Then I take that halfway, this is K2, and it estimate my third slope at that point. And then fourth slope is going to take entire h using this third slope. And I'm going to, ultimate slope is a weighted average. Now I geometrically claim that it's going to kind of land, even for a pretty big h, it's going to land right at the solution. Well, let's check. How about you program? And that's going to be your quiz for today. It's four lines of code. What do you mean, what? It is four lines of code, everybody. You're going to take this function, okay, copy it over to the next cell, and you're going to call that Rangekara. And this slope here will be some combination of other slopes, okay? But then there will be this, you need to program the rest of it here. So my K1 is this first slope, okay? Then there is K2, then there is K3, then there is K4. And the slope is some sort of combination of the above. So only go to four. Yes, only four slopes, yes. <laughs> In getting them right. I uploaded the initial one. You can just take that Euler method and make a copy of it and start from it, from what I uploaded. Which one you uploaded? Hmm? Oh, you didn't have Euler method? No. You want all of this? Come on, you can you can type that in. This is your Euler method, as it were. Just 
Type this in. Here we go. Yeah. It's the same for loop as you had it. Yi plus 1 is this ultimate slope times h. What changes is this. So if I didn't have all of this, I would have Euler method, okay? And my slope would be this first one, k1. <coughs> but do you see conceptually it's just gauging the slope better? And Yes, 1 over 6 plus 2 over 6. This is what you need to compute the slope. And I want you to compare Euler method for point H is 0.5 and this Runge cutoff for H is 0.5. Yeah. The, all of them have this like slope y of i plus slope types times h. Question is what is slope and how do you? And I can give you variants of those to program for your final exam. And as, as long as I give it to you, you should know how to program it. And I'm not going to ask you to come up with a new method that would be beyond the scope of this. And then you write it down. Okay. okay. That should be it. And then I want to do the same comparison as I did here. That's all I need to do. Yes, it's not that I'm asking you anything beyond your... It's all within your... Comp Capability. How's that? This graph? Oh, this. Yeah, they're taken from different textbooks. Oh, yeah, it looks like projections. Yeah. But this is just these different K1, K2, K3, basically plotted for one and this so what did I do uh, wrong get cut out. they take a little more weight yes but again, ultimately, the way the weights are decided are just to cancel terms in Taylor series and get greater accuracy. Look at this. Where's my orange line? Why is it not there? It's right on top of it. So I'm actually going to plot it. Look at that. No, 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 I removed Hoyne from this com comparison. This is just Euler and Rangekar. Hoyne? No, it's not on top of Euler. It's a little better than Euler. 
it's closer to the analytic solution. So this is where my Hoyne is. See? This is Hoyne, this is analytic, and this is Euler. This is what I want you to plot for your quiz grade that you're going to submit by sometime tonight. Hmm? Yes, H is 0.5 for Euler and Rangakara. That's what I want for quiz. Yes, and the, and the code that goes with it, snapshot of the code. You just yes, I want you to compare the two. Is this yes, Euler and Rangakara? So for H is 0.5. No, I want the code only for Rang Rangakara. The other one I posted for you, so. <laughs> so it's, you don't have to give it to me back. There is like all, a bunch of second order methods, different weights, different slopes. The idea is the same. I estimate this ultimate slope, and I can do that in a number of different ways. And this is the exercise that you just did. Yeah, this is just plotted slightly differently. But this is uh, this is for point one. I want you to submit for point is five. Just for point five, Euler and Rangikat. Just I just need code for Rangikara. No, I'm talking about plotted. Oh no, I just want these two. Okay. And on top of analytic solution, so I can see how well you're doing. Yes? Okay. We're going to next time essentially solve a couple of problems. I'm probably going to do that on paper just in preparation for exam. And you also need to evaluate me. So course evaluation, a course evaluations, and that's going to be a good Okay. So please don't skip Monday class. I want this and that and analytic. That's what I want. Yes. Yes. You can screenshot it as long as it fits into the screen.